So I've got a really important reminder for you as a deep game practitioner that as a coach and as a teacher, I, I feel I can't say this often enough. And that reminder is this, when you're on the court during a game, that is not the time to be reminding yourself and thinking about the deep game laws and principles and techniques. And for that matter, that goes for any aspect of your game or your training. If you're trying to uh, refine a certain move or adjust the form on your jump shot, the, thinking through all of that stuff and trying to work it into games is not a good idea. <laughs> During a game is the time to relax into the enjoyment of playing the game itself and forget all of the concepts and all of the things that you work on in training. That doesn't mean you let go of them and you just don't do them. <laughs> that means that you stop thinking about them and you allow yourself to just play the game, all right? And there's this beautiful, beautiful quote from an old jazz musician named Charlie Parker, which is kind of famous among our deep game members. And it goes like this, first you learn the instrument, then you learn the music, then you forget it all and you just play. And the basketball equivalent of that, and it, well, well, we'll rewind for a second back to his quote, as a musician, those, if you've ever been to a concert, the concerts that like really, or, or a live music performance of any kind, the ones that really absorb you in them are when the artist has just forgotten themselves completely. And there's this magical moment where they're just like this channel for the music to come through. They're not thinking through, oh, how do I play this note? Or um, as they're singing, like focusing on their voice and hitting every note perfectly, it's just streaming through them. They're playing from the heart. And this is when you're going to play the best basketball. And so going back to that quote, First, we learn the instrument. You learn the tactical, the technical, the fundamental aspects of the game and of the deep game. And then you learn the, the music, the, the rhythm of the game and the pace and the flow of it. But then you forget it all and you step on the court, you lace them up and you play the game that you love. Okay, you play it from the heart. And uh, I'll offer one more example for you just to drive this point home because it's so important. You could approach your game and, and aspects of the deep game almost like a, a race car mechanic. When you're not on the track, you're tinkering with the engine and adding horsepower and fine tuning the machine and really trying to optimize it for performance. But when you get on the track, you just go. You're not tinkering with the engine as you're driving. That's a recipe for disaster. And yet this is what a lot of players do. They try to think through their game and think through the deep game as they're playing. And this is the equivalent of tinkering with their car while they're actually in a race. It's no good. All right. So while you are playing, relax into the enjoyment and the freedom of playing the game that you love. When you're off the court, that's when you can retrain yourself in the deep game techniques and remind yourself and analyze how did I play? Look at the game film. Uh, look at your emotional experience of the game. What can I learn from this and really start to tinker with it and do the same thing from your, for your surface game. Of course, if there's adjustments that need to be made there, you don't make them during games, you make them in your training. And again, I really can't say this often or strongly enough. Frankly, this is what separates the players that have a lot of success with the deep game program from the players who kind of spin their wheels and get even more stuck in their head with these new concepts. When you step on the court, relax into the game, enjoy it and just play. And one little uh, subtlety or nuance to this that I wanna offer you here, um, is that when you are in a pickup game that's more casual and doesn't really matter, that's when you might test drive some new stuff. That's when you might tinker. That that I even consider training. And there's this old really funny story about uh, from Kobe's AAU career in the summer months, he used to play to his weaknesses and he would try out moves that he wasn't really proficient in yet. And there, his old AAU coach, coach told this story about when uh, in a certain game, Kobe was trying to master this crossover move that he hadn't got down yet. And he dribbled it off his foot like eight times in a row and suddenly the team's down 15 points. And the coach is like, Kobe, can you get it together, man? We need to win this game. And that was kind of Kobe's approach in the summer months. He would just work on the stuff that he felt he needed to develop for when it really mattered in his season. And I'm not saying do this for your AAU team and upset your coach and your teammates or any of that. That's a, a pretty selfish way to play. And I'm sure Kobe would have admitted that later on. But the point remains when you're in things like pickup games or um, you know, casual games where there's not a lot on the line, 
uh, well, let's restrict this. Okay, I'm gonna be very specific. Pickup games, <laughs> casual pickup games. That's when you can uh, start to work on stuff and tinker and uh, you know address certain aspects of your game that need attention. But when you're in a game, forget it all and just play. All right. So once again, this uh, this is so critically important. I give you full permission. Forget the deep game concepts while you're playing and just allow the training to take over automatically. And if you are addressing and training yourself in the deep game and in these techniques, you will have them available to you automatically. You will um, execute the law of presence and the law of reverse effort and the law of extremes and all of these other laws automatically. They'll be built into the system and they will run as a part of you rather than you trying to do them while you're out there on the court. Okay, so I hope that reminder was useful for you. Come back and like watch this over again anytime that you need to. It's really, really, really important. And as you go through, you know, the Deep Game Masterclass and the Deep Game Program, remind yourself of this over and over again. Don't get caught up in these concepts as you're out there on the court. Just relax into the enjoyment of the game itself. Hey, it's Taylor. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, the best thing to do right now while it's fresh in your mind is to head over to deepgame.com and join us in our free masterclass. Now, this is where you'll learn all eight laws of the deep game and all of the fundamentals that you need to know about the part of basketball that's played with the mind. We've had players call this the best hour of basketball learning of their lives, and it's completely free right now. So head over to deepgame.com to join us, and I will see you there.